Attorney General Ken Paxton joining us. And General, it's good to have you. I'm glad that all of this is now done. Uh, the acquittal is in and, and you are actually free now to go back to dealing with the business of the people of Texas. So this is good news indeed and expected, honestly. Yeah, look, four months I was on sidelines. A lot of things didn't happen that would have. Some of those are with the border. Uh, obviously, we've had tremendous problems with the House even doing anything about the border. And uh, I'm just glad to be back because we, we've already been talking about several issues. You know what's going on. It's, it's not gotten any better. And they took me out of the fight for four months, which is really unfortunate, but I'm back to, to, to deal with that issue. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to ask you. I want people to understand just how mm -hmm. much the fight at the border has been impacted by this you know witch hunt with some of your supposed to be same side political enemies because that's ultimately what this was there was no and i'm not going to relitigate it there was no evidence presented i mean they even had to admit it in court uh and, and it was very very embarrassing for them i mean they were it was an embarrassment what they did uh but I, tell us how was this impacted i mean how was this made worse to have like the tip of the spear that's been pushing back against this at the border how much how much how bad was this impacted by you being tied up so for four months, I'm out, but also we're losing people as, as time's going on because they're worried about their jobs. And so the people are being hired away. So some of our best and brightest actually left. So I have to replenish that and try to find new people then get them engaged on the issue. So it's hard to measure like how much that, how much they impacted the border, but clearly that, that was not their concern. They never called me and say, said, Hey, how's this going to impact your office? What, what can we do to help? They did nothing but create harm in the house targeted my office while I was gone, making it more difficult for them to, to do all kinds of different things. So they made it more difficult and they harassed my office while I was out. That was Dave Phelan and his, his crew of, of, of house members that decided this was a good idea. I just, uh, we're talking with uh, Attorney General of the Republic of Texas, Ken Paxton. And, you know, we, we talked a little bit, of, we've been covering this on the show and, and talking a little bit about, talked about this last hour. I mean, last, last issue on this, and then we got to talk about these major developments now at the southern border. But is do you view this as a is this the last gasp of the Bush cartel? Uh, you know what? You've still got Carl Rove, who's on Fox News, who, who people are misguided about, who still has a lot of influence there to get different people on those shows. And he's still involved in Republican politics, helping a lot of times Democrats or more liberal Republicans. So he's still out there. And, and obviously he's a Bush operative and connected to Johnny Sutton who was involved in my trial, representing all the, the ex-employees that were here for free over the last three years. Apparently, he, they are going to pay at some point, but it's odd that for three years, they haven't even signed a fee agreement. So the Bush operatives, and of course, they had George P. set up to take my spot. He knew before I did what was happening in my office. It's clear because of when he applied for his law license after 10 years. So they're still out there hoping for the reemergence of, of the Bush dynasty. That's just wild to me. I, we, moved, we moved to Texas 10 years ago, and I had heard from my friends in Texas about how, you know, the family operated and there's, you know, there's this, this, this factional war on the right. To see it, though, like play out the way that I have over the past decade has been pretty amazing. Uh, but we're glad that you're through this and uh, we're glad that, uh, you know, you, integrity has been restored here and that you've been acquitted as, as uh, justifiably so. I got to ask you about the president's move, General, the 400, actually 472,000, I believe, Venezuelans who have been given this sort of temporary reprieve on deportation. I've been looking at Customs and Border Patrol, their reports coming in from Eagle Pass, uh, you know, Del Rio. We're looking at thousands upon thousands upon thousands of illegal immigrants coming across the border. There were 9,000 under the bridge. I think that we're in uh, Eagle Pass just the other day. Uh, the governor has declared that this is an invasion uh, said that uh, because of the invasion, they deployed the, the guard, DPS, local law enforcement. General, there were people, the feds, cutting the wire on the banks of the Rio to allow people to enter the country uh, illegally. How is the federal government getting away with this? Uh, it's completely illegal. And now that we know that, we're, up, we're looking at another way to try to stop it, which all I can do is lawsuit. I have lawyers. I don't have guys with guns and who can go down there and, and, and prevent this from happening. But we are looking at our, our options as, as to how we might stop this. But it, you know, I think that alone tells you exactly what, what, this, uh, what this administration is all about. They are encouraging this in every way possible, even inhibiting our 
efforts on the border to stop this from happening. And it doesn't matter where people are coming from. It doesn't matter what their background. It doesn't matter if they're criminals. It doesn't matter if they're trafficking drugs. The Biden administration wants them here. Yeah, I, I, we're showing some of the video on the simulcast for the radio program of uh, these, uh, I guess, federal agents that the administration sent down. I mean, I, the way that I characterize this, General, it looks like, I mean, like the administration is kind of declaring war on, you know, border border states and, and border towns. Uh, there, I mean, there have been Democrat mayors that have spoken up against this. Uh, and yet we see that the federal government is essentially, I mean, are they in collusion with the cartels? I mean, at this point, I got to ask, like, who's making money to allow this lawlessness at the border? There's no doubt. I, I've been saying this I was saying this before I was, you know, ousted four months ago, and there's definitely a partnership between the cartels and the Biden administration. The cartels know exactly what they need to do. They just have to deliver them. It used to be people came to the border and they tried to get around border patrol, tried to hide. That is not the deal now. It is a handoff. And the more people the cartels can bring in, the more money they make. And they know that. And the Biden administration knows that. There is a clear tacit agreement between the cartels and the Biden administration. They are working together. And the whole drug cartel thing, obviously, the, the border's wide open for that as well. So the Biden administration is willing to sacrifice our children to drug overdoses from fentanyl because they want more illegals here. It's it's really evil and it's terrible. Yeah. Uh, how I, I, I read the we had the headline last week. The Biden administration said that they were going to prevent, try to prevent. I guess this is you know a punishment to Texas. Uh, illegal immigrants from leaving the state. They were very upset I, with the busing of illegal immigrants to New York and I guess Martha's Vineyard as well. Can they do that? Can they can they prevent illegal immigrants from from going further into the interior and leaving well, Texas? Look, here's the deal. They don't respect the law, so I, I, I presume they they think they can do anything. Uh, it's pretty shocking though that, that that you know the strategy here is to get as many illegals in the Republican states for two reasons. One is votes. Second do as much damage to the Republican states because we're all, our, our states, pick them, Texas, Florida, Tennessee, Utah. I mean, Republican states with successful policies are attracting people. And if they can do harm to us, which they are, by causing us you know, more crime, higher costs on education, higher costs in healthcare, higher costs in all kinds of ways, that's what they're trying to do on top of the voting. They want to do harm. That's what our federal government is doing to Republican states. Yeah, talking with Attorney General of Texas, Ken Paxton. Speaking of that, what the what the federal government is doing, this headline coming out at CNN, but you know, uh, more military personnel heading to the U.S.-Mexico border as officials describe the increase in crossings. This sounds less like they're going to deal with the uh, deluge coming across the border and more like they are going to kind of push back against the guard and the other resources that the governor has called. I mean, that's just kind of the first impression that I get. Do you, I mean, is this going towards some sort of standoff? You know what? It, 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 it appears to be that way because we're, I mean, the governor's in a pretty difficult situation. Obviously, you don't want some type of conflict with federal agents. And I've talked to these federal agents. They don't want it either. They'd love to be doing their job. They'd love to be enforcing our laws. That's what they signed up for. Unfortunately, we've got a bunch of politicians in Washington in the Biden administration who have ordered them to do just the opposite of what their jobs are. And people that speak out in the Border Patrol are summarily pushed out or, you know, prosecuted, as we've seen. Mm. That's just unbelievable. Last question for you, Attorney General Ken Paxton, uh, joining us via Skype. Are you going to run for Senate? Are you going to go for corn and seat? <laughs> you know what I said? All options are on the table. Uh, so I, that I sounds like that. a yes. It kind of sounds like well, look, a yes. I, I am just so happy to be doing my job right now and have the opportunity to get back here and try to work on some of these problems. But I, I've been here the entire time Cornyn's been in office, and I can't, I, I'm pretty involved. I generally know what people are doing. I can't name one thing that he's accomplished in his 14 years. For the first time ever, I heard him actually talking about the border today, and I think it's because I said he, he, hasn't, he hasn't done anything about the border. So finally, he's, he's actually saying he needs to do something about the border. Well, it's a little late for him, but I'll take it, whatever you can do. But I have never seen him, and I'd love to hear some examples of things that he's accomplished for Texans or for anybody that isn't related to some political deal. Mm, oh, well, and, and it sounded like a yes. I'm just, Kane, we're going to know that. It sounded <laughs> like yes. Attorney General Kim Paxton, uh, we are glad that you are now unencumbered to get back to the business of Texans. And uh, we're glad to have you back in the fight. Thanks so much for your time today. Good to talk hey, with you. Hey, so glad to be back. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Take care.